galaxies really shouldn't do this. Astrophysicists have found that small galaxies sit together significantly closer than predicted by the current dark matter theory. Does this mean that the theory is wrong? Quite possibly, yes. And it's not just this one study. Evidence is building up that dark matter isn't as simple as we thought it is. Will this finally, finally help us to find out what dark matter is? Let's have a look. That you watch my channel makes me think you like news that respects your intelligence like they do at The Economist, who've been the advertisement sponsor for this video. And yes, I have a special discount for you. The Economist is one of the few publications that consistently covers science, politics, economics, and global affairs without dumbing it down or hyping it up. Their reporting is fact-based, international, well-written, and to the point. What I especially value about The Economist is that they cover genuinely original material, and I find their reporting generally balanced. They recently ran a very interesting article, for example, about researchers developing new benchmark tests for AI that have to grapple with the problem that the new generations of AI seem to know when they're being tested and sometimes hide their capabilities. Personally, I like reading the print version, but besides the online version, The Economist also has an app with videos, podcasts and an audio version so you can listen to the news while you're on the go. If that sounds like something you have use for too, here comes the special offer. You'll get 20% off their subscription if you use my link economist.com slash Sabina. And now back to the science news. Astrophysicists believe that the universe is filled with dark matter, of which there's an average five times as much as normal matter. However, within galaxies, the fraction of dark matter is believed to be significantly higher, 10 times as much as normal matter or more. So far, all evidence we have for dark matter is indirect. We infer its presence from its gravitational pull, for example, from the speeds of stars or galaxies and from the way massive objects warp background light. But despite about half a century of attempts to catch one of those particles in a detector, we still have no idea what, if anything, dark matter is made of. So far, astrophysicists have assumed that dark matter isn't just dark and goes through our normal matter, but that it doesn't stick to itself other than by gravity. It has a very weak self-interaction, as physicists say. But in the past years, we've seen evidence building up that this might not be the case. Dark matter seems to be more complicated. This recent paper is an analysis of data from the Sloan Digital Sky Survey. The authors looked at nearly 7,000 isolated small so-called dwarf galaxies and studied how those galaxies were distributed. They found that among the least massive dwarf galaxies, those that were more diffuse, so more fuzzy, were also more clustered together. If you use the normal dark matter theories, this makes no sense, because the clustering should only depend on the mass. However, if dark matter can interact with itself, there's a simple explanation for this. If dark matter interacts with itself, this has the effect of spreading out and smoothing the dark matter distribution in the galaxies and that of the visible stars along with it. This, however, takes a lot of time. Add to this that all galaxies are more likely to be found sitting closely together because when they formed, the universe hadn't expanded so much. And taken together, these two things mean that if dark matter self-interacted, then older dwarf galaxies are both more likely to cluster and more likely to be diffuse, hence explaining the observation. The authors write very clearly, our results can be explained well by assuming self-interacting dark matter, suggesting that such a scenario should be considered seriously. This hasn't been the only recent finding that hints at self-interacting dark matter. Remember that I said if the dark matter is self-interacting, it'll fluff out the dark matter distribution because it scatters on itself? Well, that only works up to some point, because much like red giants, this spreading out eventually leaves the core of the dark matter distribution unable to support itself. It then collapses 
and that should lead to a sharply rising rotation curve in the center of the galaxy. And this is exactly what they found in a recent analysis of rotation curves of five dwarf galaxies. They say that it's a five sigma outlier from standard dark matter. Such a surprisingly overconcentrated dark matter halo that strong evidence for self-interaction was also found in a gravitational lens analysis a few months earlier. This too is a five sigma outlier Liar, that's very difficult to explain with standard dark matter. By the way, this video comes with a quiz that'll let you check how much you remember. What does this tell us about the dark matter particles? At the moment, the observations are best compatible with a light or midweight particle, such as dark photons. That's particles which behave similar to normal photons, but have a mass and don't themselves cause light emissions, so they're dark. What the data is not compatible with is a type of particle that's long been a favorite, the so-called weakly interacting massive particles, WIMPs for short, because, well, they're too weakly interacting. Instead, physicists now favor strongly interacting massive particles, and yes, those are called, drums please, SIMPs. So you see, there's progress on the foundations of physics after all. We're no longer talking about WIMPs, but now about SIMPs. More seriously, this is a very interesting development because it might give us a clue what detector we even need to build to measure dark matter. These observations are also very difficult to explain with modified gravity, so my Mondo meter is still hovering on the dark matter side. But maybe dark matter isn't hiding. Maybe it's just trying to avoid peer review. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.